Hi, my name is Doug Burke from Doug Burke's Tackle World We're here on the Gold Coast at a new address at number 11 slash 8 Centre View Drive. Let's put down 8 Centre View Drive actually, at Bigger Waters near Harbour Town. Um, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to rig up a gar and I'm going to rig up, oh that's from Spanish mackerel and a filtered for spotty mackerel. Um, I'm going to show you how to make the rig first so on each one. So what we're going to do, we need uh, some wire. Just single strand wire. We use single strand wire, not seven strand wire. Uh, we need some hooks. I'm um, using mustard uh, double seven, double six tarp on hooks. Uh, or I use the VMC hook like so. We'll use the, we'll use the mustard today. Uh, we need some little black crane swivels that are really strong. Uh, using size four or size five. They're very small swivels but very strong. Uh, some net leads, just like so. These are net leads which we use to bring up on the as a weight onto the um, onto the hook, and then we have a little bit of um, a little bit of um, color. <laughs> this is called this is a buku product. Um, these are what we call a wog head. That's just the terminology used for them, and they peel back over the fish like so when you're trolling it, and uh, they're quite heavy. And in the water, they're beautiful, and the, the mackerel just absolutely love them. So they're really, really good. I'll show you how to do that in a moment. So, let's get started. So, what we, I use around about uh, 44 pound wire, or 40 pound wire, something that, that size. What I do is I just cut off a piece that's around about 50 centimeters long. So you only need enough for a bite trace. A lot of people use like a meter and a half of wire. That's terrible. Uh, two things that are wrong with that is, there's a more chance of kinking up. Uh, Biggest problem is when you get the fish close to the boat, if you go grab your wires, it's gonna slice straight through your hand. So it's very dangerous to grab. So we don't use much wire, we just use a bite tray. So imagine the lures or the baits on that side of the fish and he's got his mouth quite long. <laughs> so it'll take a big fish. So be generous with what, what you cut off. Okay, we'll grab some hooks, which are the uh, double seven, double six, seven are hooks. Now, first thing I do is get a pair of side cutters. You do two tools, side cutters and a pair of pliers. So we've got the side cutters, we just pinch the eye of the hook, just like so. And just open the eye up a little bit, you just pull it out. I'll do one, oh, another one for you. Just pinch the eye of the hook, hook here, and just pull it out as well, that just opens it up. I remember my dad used to use a centre punch on a block of wood and a hammer. He used to open up the hooks in the old days. I don't know why he didn't use one of these. They were around those days. <laughs> um, but he used to break a lot of eyes. So then what we do, to put the hook in, we turn the hook around that way and it pops in. In all gang hooks, this is how you do it. Put it in, you twist it around that way and it falls down, okay? Then what we do, we get the pliers and we close it. When we close it, we actually roll the hook forward. So roll it around like so. That stops it from being elongated in shape. If it's elongated in shape, the hook can actually fall out. But if you round it around, it doesn't fall out. So twist it around in like so. Next thing we do, so that they won't fall off. Next thing we do is we just bend the hook just a little bit. So get your pliers just up to the eye there, put your hand like this, and just push down on the back part of the hook and just bend it just a little bit like so. So it sits up further into the fish. Second one, same deal, the bottom hook, sorry. Grab the hook just in the eye, push down with your thumb, uh, here, uh, pardon my hand, sorry, and just bend a little bit like so. Don't bend the top of okay, that's the first part. Next thing we're gonna do is grab our little piece of wire we cut off before. Um, appears to be I've lost that little bit of wire, so we're gonna get another piece of wire. <laughs> sorry, I'll probably make this comical so it's not so boring. It's gonna go for about probably 10 minutes, folks, so go make yourself a cup of coffee or whatever. Cut it. Okay. So, first thing I do is put the swivel on. Get one of these little swivels, like so. And you have to get a close up here if you don't mind on this one. So, you can see how much is sticking through the swivel. The swivel, that's how much is sticking out. At that point, we bend it quite tight. Really close it again. And the secret is to go with your hands underneath. Each time you twist it, go underneath and underneath and underneath and just 
finish off so that the, the main line's a straight one and the uh, twisted one is actually the the, uh, the branch one here is the one we're going to work with now. So if you can look at this closely, the wires actually twisted around each other. Not just one wire around the straight piece, it's actually around each other, so to speak. And then we finish it off, we just get that, that piece there and we just do a follow-up of about six or seven turns. Now I'm going to get Shannon at work to show you how to rig up a live bait rig next couple of days he'll be doing that. So keep on tuned for that one. He won't commentary, I'll commentary and he can just do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you'll go to Shannon's YouTube. What's his YouTube call him, Shannon? Shannon's YouTube. Shannon's YouTube. Okay, to finish this off, we go back and forward, back and forward, back and forward. Some people use a little crank handle. I don't. I sort of use that, but don't cut it with the pliers, okay? Very important. Back and forward. It takes a little bit, but it'll, it'll break off very quick. This one's taking a little bit longer than normal. Gosh. Okay, come back from your cup of tea now. Um, so we've just straightened it up a little bit and that's it. It's just a hay white twist. Okay. At the other end here, this goes onto the hook. Before we do that, we need to put our our um, the weight of the of this thing here, the wall gate, on first. And we're gonna use a gas spring. The gas springs. Uh, so these are called gar springs or rigging springs sorry these can be used on garfish saris tailor bonito even filters everything and what they do is they lock onto the, the wire and they screw down tight onto the head of the fish and hold it all in position so it doesn't fall off the hook at the front and it doesn't uh, spin on the on the in the water, it holds it all intact. A really important part of the rig. I have a little a little lead here. This is where you start your wire, goes through that little slot, and you just keep screwing up, screwing up, screwing up, tight the fish, which we'll see a bit later. So we put on the, the walk head the right way. So skirt forward, in like so. Then we put on the spring, like so. Then we grab the rig and we do a hay white twist again. So just saying blow one of my stuff. Thanks, Shane. And then we go round and round again. Same deal. Under and mm -hmm. over. Keeping it nearly at 180 degrees as we're doing that, by the way. And always finish off with the main line being the straight one before you actually do the rolls around with this little spike here. Now this one you're trying to twist fairly tight because you can't have it too long because remember the bait fish is not that large so you can't make the twist too long. It has to be quite short and tight. And just finish it off with the uh, the wire at 90 degrees to the hooks. So it's the same uh, shape as the hooks as you can see there. Same uh, angle. Then we just trim that off a little bit, make it about, about probably 25 mil long. When you cut in single strand wire, make sure you know where the little bit goes because otherwise it ends up in someone's foot. And the last thing we do is we put the lead on. This is the net lead, which we use for rigging leads as well. There is already 84 grams in that jig head, so it's actually really quite heavy, but we're going to add about another 30 grams to the equation, 40 grams. So to do that, we just sit it on the hook like so. Get the pliers with the pliers coming next. Look like so. And zoom up here on the picture. And you just actually roll it. Sorry. It's all happening. Slip your hands. Roll it down. If you've got a vise, it's even easier to work with. Just like so. Now, 
the beauty of lead is you can shape it, you can file it, you can do whatever you want with it. I normally just squash the front in a little bit so it wraps in tight onto the hook. Sort of squash it forward as you're doing it. So I'm sort of stretching the lead, if that makes sense. And that's it, it's fairly tight on there now. So my rig looks now like this. Like so. Looks terrible, but it works well. <laughs> looks pretty actually. But what we do next is we put, get, get the gar, let's show you how to put the gar on. Still defrosting actually. We might just give that another couple of minutes. So while we're waiting for that defrost, we'll put that next to it. So you can play with it and look at it. You can't play with it, but you can look at it. We'll rig up the uh, the one for the for the pilchard. So same deal again. Uh, I'm using smaller hooks. So they're actually 6-0 uh, tarpons on, on the gar fishery. We're now going to use um, these are four O um, straight open eye. Uh, uh, stra uh, I think they might be a gamakatsu. I think they are actually gamakatsu gangster four O's. They are just like that. Same deal again. Uh, we're going to get the piece of wire. Similar scenario. Let's see. So just read up the swivel earlier. So same thing. So on this one here, you can use just a little pink skirt. Okay, this is the most popular rig we sell for, for chasing spotty. So that just goes straight in there like that. Straight onto here like this. We don't use a spring on this one. You can if you want, but I don't. I just use a bit of copper wire. So again, same deal with the, with the haywire twist. Under and over. Under and over. Finish off straight. Around a couple of turns. Just keep that at 90 degrees with the main wire, otherwise, it'll go all skew whip on the twist. My eyes aren't the best, sorry about that. That's not too bad, I think. So, this one here, because I'm using um, single strand wire, I don't need that little piece on there. So you don't need to keep that up straight. I'm just going to put a, a spring on it. I'm not using spring this time. So again, we're going to do the back and forward. See, that's how I normally break quick like that. I don't want that last one. It was a bit of a rogue one that one, but anyway, it's all good. And then what we're going to do here is get a piece of this, uh, this here. I'm going to cut this down a bit. Just a half of one. Folding that inside the other one. And then just again, as I said before, push it forward just to tighten it down to the hook. Keep leveraging it forward. At the end of the day, it doesn't have to be super neat, it just needs to be fairly firm on there. It's quite hard to pull it up and down. I can't pull it up and down actually. So that's ready to roll. And then on here, um, we use uh, single strand copper wire. This is specially made for um, rigging out. You buy it like this, um, there's a whole heap of them in here. Just pull off one little strand at a time. The perfect length for rigging up your bait. Goes back in this little house. And this one here, sometimes you can lay it down inside the sinker if you want. I didn't do it this time, but you don't need to do that. I normally just go through and then just um, go over the top of that little bit of wire. Go back through the top again. And that's it. That's, you can do one more wrap around there if you want to, but you don't need to. The piece here, and just trim it off. Copper wire is not dangerous and doesn't spike it too bad. Unlike a um, single strand wire, carbine. It's 
very soft. So that should be in white, which I'll go through the eye of the filter, which I'll show you in a moment. Let's see which one of these is defrosted the most for the filter it is, so he's first up. So what we do is we just measure it out for the hook to go through the pilchard and for that hook to be sitting dead set under his sort of mouth, just there like that. So, okay, the first hook's gonna start down here. So we go in here like this, straight. I like to do it at the center. Some people like to tie them upside down, but I like to tie them on normal. Second one in. Third one in. So, and then this one here, this goes through the eye, around the shank, just pull it tight down. There's a product called Baitmate, which we sell. It's like a, a cocoon ghost, they call it, ghost cocoon. It's like a, uh, a clear, rubbery type material. You can wrap it around if you're a bit worried about anything not working, but uh, this will generally work all right. So that's it. And then all we do is we just slide the little skirt down, just over the eye of the hook and up against his nose there. And that just all um, falls into place. Like so, when you put it in the water, it's pretty important that you put it in without that skirt falling off like that. So drop it in the water so the, the weight's against him like that and these little heads are gonna sit inside there. So if you can see that, that's how, how it looks. Okay. And the rig's only about that long, you can see it's not that long. So that's gonna catch me a Spanish, a spotted mackerel, and, and I put Spanish mackerel on too. Um, one thing with this, this top rig here is, we're trolling it at about, um, like just in idle speed, so the boat's only doing one knot, two knots max. And we're dropping it a fair way back, I'm talking like 60 meters minimum, 60 to 100 meters. Just watch out for boats towing behind you and crossing behind your path. So, and remember how far your bait is out, sometimes you might have to give it a bit of stick to get away so no one doesn't run over your line. Or pull it back to your neutral and let it sink down so the boat can go to the top. And a lot of times you get fish that way too, because sometimes the fish is following it and they'll actually nail it when it's falling, or they'll nail it when it's getting pulled back up. Okay, okay garfish. That's my garfish mate going. It's a little half frozen, but that's all right. Okay, the garfish. First thing I do is snap his bottom beak off. Pretty well level with the top of his beak. The next thing I'm gonna do, I can't do it today because it's still frozen, but where that little silver line is on both sides, you squeeze along it starting from the front here, and it actually pops the meat off the backbone. Squeeze it along, go all the way along there, and it actually makes it a lot more softer, but because he's frozen, it doesn't want to bend, but sorry about that, but anyhow, that's it. Uh, the next thing we do, we turn it upside down, we just squeeze down here and squeeze any poo out of his bum so it doesn't bloat up or anything, it's all empty cavity. Then we get the hooks and we measure out the hooks so that the 90 degree wire goes up through in this section right here. You want it to go through just in front of his eyes, in his beak, before the end of his mouth, just in that hard part of his beak there. So we get it, we measure it. So my first hook's going to start up right about here. This needs bum hole. One, two, just keep the centre again. You see, because we bent those hooks, they sit right up tight inside there, okay? It's really important. So you'll know mackerel chomp pretty hard with those hooks. Um, and now this part here is going to go up through here, like you're saying. And it's be careful not stab yourself, but you've got to try and push it out through that hard part of his beak. Sometimes it can be a little bit tricky. It's easier from this way, actually. Just trying to do it full so you can see it a little bit. So then we get the spring. You can see it sticking out the top there. So we get the spring now. We roll the spring down. We get the spring started on there. You can see that's got one layer in there now. And we just keep turning the spring up nice and tight and lock it on its head as tight as we can get it. And that's my gar, slightly stiff, uh, ready to go catch a big Spanish. And then when you drop it in the water, 
you get this part here, that's where you put it in the water, put it on, this, on the, that part, and that then, these have a big hole in there, if you can see that hole there, see the hole there? So that actually goes, the, that spring sits up inside of that, all right? There are little eyes on here, I try and line them up sideways, but it doesn't really matter. You've got lots of fish about the eyes, facing upside down, inside out, and when you've got the fish all rigged up, in the water, it's quite hard to see here, but it looks quite, um, quite, quite good, but you can't see it because I can't get the skirt back, but that's it. On this part here, um, I use a, either a snap swivel, or I tie, uh, I use fluorocarbon lead around about 60 pounds, uh, tied directly to that swivel, anywhere between 40 and 80 pounds I use, depending how big my mackerel are and whatever else. Um, I like to use light wire about 40 pounds, single strand, 44. Um, I will use up to about 86 pound, but 44, 58, 69 or 86 are all good. But the, at the moment, they are a little bit fussy. Another about a month, they'll be on quite, quite well. And any size will work. But at the moment, stick with your 44 or 58, so 40 pounds, 40 pounds is good to do. Um, so that's that's the rig. So um, get out there. Um, at the moment, I'm still trying to find out whether we're still allowed to fish. I think we are. Um, there was something come through from fisheries today saying that fishing's all good at the moment. So um, the weather looks a bit windy tomorrow morning, but it comes off again tomorrow afternoon. I think Saturday's quite good, Sunday comes in a bit crappy. So you might get Saturday morning if you, if you are still working, if you're not working, maybe tomorrow afternoon fish might be right. It's actually a lunchtime bite at the moment, so um, you'll probably find around about midday would be a good time to get out there if that wind drops off a bit tomorrow afternoon to about two o'clock or three o'clock. Uh, yeah, good luck. Please be safe, look after your families and your friends and, um, and respect. Uh, the, the distance needed when you're fishing, which is 1.5 meters. So, if you're a little boat, maybe just two of you. If you get a bigger boat, maybe get three, a couple of your mates on with you. Good luck and, and please enjoy the time. Thank you. Bye bye.